Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. My name's Joe. This was after a casual drink with my colleagues at the end of the workday. I think it was a little past eight at night. Just as I was about to enter the convenience store near my house, a young girl came out. The smell of shampoo wafting from her hair was so incredibly strong that I half turned my head and followed her with my eyes. Sure enough, I knew her. She lived in the apartment building across from mine. Though we had never spoken, we would give each other a nod if we happened to see each other in front of our apartments. She had a short haircut with a little flip at the ends. I'm not great at understanding women's hairstyles, but it seemed to be called a mullet haircut. I thought she was a college student, probably in her early 20s. She wasn't flashy, but had a kind of soft, approachable, and cute face. Usually she was well-dressed, but that night she was in a tracksuit. Unusually, she staggered down the street at night, weighed down by the plastic bags she carried in both hands. After I finished at the convenience store and entered the alleyway to my apartment, I saw her not far ahead, standing still with two plastic bags at her feet. One of the bags had ripped open under the weight of its contents. What's wrong? I asked. When I called out, she looked up at me with a pleading expression. It's just heavy. Following her words, I looked at the bags on the ground. Each bottle contained 4.2 gallons of mineral water, eight in total. I thought it was a rather hefty purchase and decided to lend a hand. I'll carry half of it. You live in that apartment building over there, right? Yes, but are you sure? I assured her it was no problem, although I was a bit bothered by the overpowering smell of her shampoo. As we walked along carrying the bags full of water bottles, I asked about the situation. About an hour ago, she had been using the shower at home. Just as she started washing her hair with shampoo, the hot water stopped. She had only planned on showering, so the bathtub was empty. She wiped off the shampoo suds with a bath towel as best she could and then stepped out of the bathroom in her tracksuit. So she hadn't rinsed off the shampoo. That's why the smell was so intense. I nodded in understanding, feeling strangely satisfied with her explanation. Despite this, her story continued. Just as she stepped out of the bathroom, the doorbell rang. It was her neighbor checking to see if her water was also out. Turned out, the water was out in all the apartments, and everyone started making a fuss. Someone called the property management company who managed the building. When they came to check, it turned out to be a problem with the water tank. They called a professional to repair it, but it couldn't be fixed that night. And so everyone had to spend a night without water. That's why she had gone to buy bottled water at the convenience store. I helped her carry the water bottles up to her room. She thanked me repeatedly, looking quite embarrassed. That's quite a disaster. Must feel awful with your hair full of shampoo. At my words, she put her hand on her own head. Yes. So after buying the water, I thought I'd boil some and wash it out. As she said this, something flashed in her mind, and her eyes lit up. Right, there's a spot on the street past the convenience store, isn't there? Maybe I'll go there. It's been a while since I last visited a spa. I wouldn't usually. I nodded, turned on my heel to leave, and then remembered something. Remembered, and turned back to her. That spot, closed on Tuesdays. Her hand, which was inserting the key into the lock, suddenly stopped. Then she looked at me with her mouth gaping. There weren't any other internet cafes or the like where she could use a shower in this neighborhood. If you'd like, you can use mine. It's old, but I keep it clean, so it's not dirty. She lived in what you might call a fancy designer condo. In contrast, I lived in a 40-year-old two-story wooden apartment building. At best, it was of a retro design, but simply put, the decay was severe. It was a rickety old apartment, but I liked it. There wasn't any particular inconvenience, and the location was good. My room was on the second floor, and it got decent sunlight. Above all, the rent was by far the cheapest in this area. I even doubted whether it was a crime scene when I first moved in. The layout of the room was such that as soon as you entered the front door, kitchen, about the size of a small dining room, was to the right, and a back bathroom unit was to the left, and there was just one larger room in the back. She was a little hesitant about my invitation, 
But losing to the unpleasant feeling of her hair, she eventually came to borrow the shower. She came to my room with a fearful look on her face, looked around with a curious look on her face, and then entered the bathroom. Immediately, I heard the sound of hot water running and pitter-pattering from the shower. It felt as though I was listening to a sound I shouldn't be hearing. So I turned on the TV in a hurry. Thanks to you, I feel refreshed. I'm glad I could be of help. Exchanging these words, I saw her off from the doorway. A few days later, in the area where my apartment is located, there was a prior notice that due to power supply maintenance, planned power outage would be implemented for about two hours from around 7 p.m. It may be inappropriate for me to say this, but I was looking forward to a little taste of what a power outage would be like, if only for a couple of hours. At exactly 7 p.m., it became pitch dark outside the window. The lights in my room remained on. Wondering what was going on, I went outside of the apartment. It turned out that even though this whole area was said to be affected, my apartment was excluded and the power outage had occurred up to the other side of the narrow lane. I was left a bit surprised, not knowing whether to be happy or disappointed. Then she came out of the condo across the street which was affected by the power outage. When I greeted her, she also bowed her head, saying, Thank you for the other day. And then she sighed and said, It's a power outage this time. It's so annoying, and I have an exam tomorrow. She had heard the notice about the planned power outage, but it seemed like she was sure it would be cancelled. But still, taking the previous water outage as a lesson, she had stored some water. In cases where water tanks are used in condos, water is sent to each room using electricity. So if there is a power outage, water will also stop. When the power really went out and the lights turned off, she thought she would try to imagine the exam questions in the dark, almost like a meditation. She was thinking about making some tea to calm down, but my place is fully electric, so not only do the lights not turn on, but I also can't get water or heat water. And so far from calming down, she became frustrated and decided to go to a fast food restaurant near the station to study. I was about to tell her that in my room the lights are on and I can heat water. I decided not to. Instead, I said, well then, good luck, take care, and saw her off. Then the next evening, when I was returning from work and about to leave the station, I saw her arguing with the station staff inside the ticket gate. Good evening. Is something wrong? Oh, Joe, I didn't remember introducing myself to her, but maybe she had seen my nameplate when she came to borrow my shower. I don't have enough money for the train fare. Train fare? How much? She answered with a face that looked like the world was ending. 80 cents. 80 cents? Nowadays, 80 cents? I couldn't help but laugh out loud, but anyways, I lent her the money. She successfully exited the train station and headed home with me. I think I dropped my phone in the train, she said. She's always been one to go cashless, paying with her phone wherever she went. Of course, she carried a bit of cash too, but that day she had just finished her college exams and had an early dinner with her friends to celebrate. The restaurant they entered only took cash, and she used up most of the cash she had. Then she took the train, but she used her phone as her train pass as well. She was able to go through the ticket gate when she boarded the train with her phone, but after she got off, she lost her phone and couldn't get out of the station. When she explained the situation to the station staff, they checked for lost items but told her, we have no matching reports yet. You can either wait a little longer or hope that the train crew finds it when the train you were on goes back to the garage. Regardless, she had to pay the train fare. It was okay to self-report the station she got on at. She should have just said she boarded from the next station, but she honestly reported the correct station and ended up short by 80 cents. With no other options, she tried to negotiate with the station staff until I happened to see her. You really are unlucky with these things, I said as we walked. She smiled wryly. It seems like it, doesn't it? Thanks for saving me again. I shrugged. No problem. I'm sure you'll find your phone. When we reached our street, I noticed the apartment manager and a few other tenants standing outside her building, talking. They noticed us and waved her over. She hurried ahead, and I followed, curious. Good news, the manager said. Your phone was found by the train crew. 
It's at the Lost and Found office now. She sighed in relief. Thank you so much. I'll go get it tomorrow. The manager nodded and then turned to me. Thanks for helping out, Joe. You seem to have a knack for being in the right place at the right time. He laughed. Just luck, I guess. Over the next few weeks, we started seeing more of each other. Our paths often crossed, and we'd chat briefly. She told me her name was Alex, and she was indeed a college student studying environmental science. Her exams went well, and she was relieved to have some free time before the next semester. One evening, as I was walking home, I saw her standing outside my apartment building, looking a bit lost. Hey Alex, what's up? She turned and smiled. Hi Joe, um, I was wondering if you had any plans tonight? I raised an eyebrow. Not really? Why? Well, I was thinking, you've helped me out a lot recently, and I wanted to thank you. Would you like to have dinner with me? I treat. I was taken aback but pleasantly surprised. Sure, that sounds great. We ended up going to a small, cozy restaurant not far from our apartment. It was a place I'd passed by many times but never visited. The food was delicious, and we spent the evening talking and getting to know each other better. She told me about her family, her studies, and her dreams of working in environmental conservation. I shared a bit about my work and my interests. We laughed a lot, and it felt like we had known each other for much longer than a few weeks. As we walked back to our street, she looked up at the night sky. It's nice to have someone to talk to. College can be pretty isolating sometimes. I nodded. I know what you mean. It's good to have company. When we reached our buildings, she turned to me and smiled. Thanks for tonight, Joe. I had a great time. Me too, Alex. Anytime you need help or just want to hang out, you know where to find me. She laughed. I'll keep that in mind. Good night, Joe. Good night, Alex. As I watched her walk into her building, I felt a warmth in my chest. Maybe it was the beginning of a new friendship, or maybe something more. Either way, I was looking forward to finding out. Conclusion And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Romans 8 28